EQ is not exactly fun, it's not flashy, and if it goes to a party, it's probably standing in the corner being ignored. But little does everyone know that one day EQ will be the most important part of any good guitar rig as it is today. That was a metaphor, and on today's episode I'm going to explain it by showing you how I like to use EQ. I got some new stuff in the mail I'm really excited to show you. It is from Massive Effects Pedals. The first one is the Dallas Devil's Play, which is a really nice Range Master type circuit. And if you know me by now, you know I love Range Master, but I'm gonna play the GOAF. It is the Golden Order of the Alchemist Fuzz, but I have a speculation. I think it actually stands for Greatest of All Fuzz. You be the judge. It's an Octafuzz, it's really killer. And um, I think I'm in love, you know, and I like these graphics. This is a little horrifying, but that's okay, because I like favors. <laughs> Started, I want to lay out a few things. The first point is that you won't see me shredding or trying to accomplish any great guitar feats today. I'm just going to hit an EQ pedal, strum some chords, maybe play a riff here and there. And the point of this entire episode is for you to hear the dynamic differences that EQ can make in your rig. I'm playing a clean amp, I'm going to stick with the same guitar, and I'm going to use a Boss GE7. Why? Well, because it's simple, you can visualize it, and it's a fantastic EQ. I have a lot of other EQs here. I'll show you some of them later. And just because I'm using this doesn't mean I don't love some of the features on other ones. Also, if you wanna argue about the best EQ and which one sounds better, you might need another hobby because the point of an EQ pedal is not that it should sound good, but that it should do exactly what you tell the knobs to do. An EQ is, in all intents and purposes, transparent until you move the sliders or the knobs. Um, with that said, I think we just get started. The first application for EQ that I want to show you is to use it as a simple clean boost. Set all the EQ flat and put the volume control wherever you want it. I have this 40 watt tube amp, so I'm gonna put it right in there and it's actually gonna break it up and push it into overdrive. So even though it's a clean boost, it might actually cause overdrive or distortion if your amp can't handle it. In this case, I really like it and I think it's great. Another awesome use of this task is if you have a single coil guitar and a humbucker guitar. So you're playing your Les Paul, you switch to a Strat mid set and you lose some volume, just have an EQ on your board, leave it alone or slightly tweak it to taste and boost the Strat. Kind of the same volume level, but you get the Strat sound, the Les Paul volume, and your sound guy's really happy. second way to use an EQ is to use it as a magical device before your favorite overdrive. In this case, I have it set up with a big mid boost going on and a little bit of volume gain, and I'm using the Westwood by Earthquaker. This is a phenomenal drive, and it's pretty transparent. It doesn't have a mid hump. It's kind of low medium gain as its power alley, and so when I slam this on in front of it, it brings the mids up and turns it into a totally different overdrive. So it's a really great use if you have a go-to drive that you love, you wanna keep your board simple, just use an EQ and kind of turn your drive into anything you want it to sound.
Next up is to use an EQ pedal as kind of a secret weapon overdrive device for your amp. So in my case, I have a cleanish 40 watt Fender thing here, and I want to find the points of EQ that are gonna break that amp up naturally. Every amp is different depending on the speaker, the type of tubes, and how loud you have it. So I turn my amp on, I engage the EQ, and I start maxing out different levels of EQ until I find some really cool points where I hear overdrive happening, because this is overwhelming your amp. It's literally overdriving it, and these frequencies can be really powerful. As you pull a band up and down, you're pulling the volume of that band up and down, so you might have your volume over here set at zero, but you're still boosting frequencies, which is really cool, and it's very different than the flat EQ. The flat EQ is, here's more volume. This is saying, here's more frequency, and every amp and every rig will respond differently to this, and it's a fantastic trick to get a brand new overdrive sound. There have actually been pedals made and sold for lots of money to make your guitar sound lo-fi, like an AM radio or FM, depending on the reception, and they're really cool. But the truth is, they're all just EQ pedals kind of set to a standard frequency. So take your EQ pedal and basically boost mids, cut out the lows, add weird high range. Every amp will be a little different. You'll see my settings. And you have the AM gold setting, I like to call it. It's lo-fi, it's really weird, and it's so crappy that it sounds good. Sometimes guitar needs to sound crappy. Last but not least is to use your EQ pedal to give you two channels on your one channel amplifier. I know what you're thinking because I read thoughts and your thoughts are, this guy's crazy, he's out of his mind, that's physically impossible. Well, you are correct, but you're also incorrect because if you put your EQ pedal at the end of your board, you can emulate another amp sound. With my Fender amp, I'm gonna pull out some lows, I'm gonna boost certain mids and highs and create a fake AC-15 kind of sound. All my pedals will hit it, all my delays, all my verbs, and it's really, really fantastic. You can also have an always-on setting that sets in the effects loop of your amp or on your board. You can transform an amp with an EQ. It's that simple, so why can't you turn that on and off and have two amp sounds? I think you can. wrap this up and show you some of the EQs I have in front of you and why I think they're cool and maybe answer a few questions that are stirring in your brain. Uh, first up is the Old Blood Noise Endeavors EQ Buffer. This is really, really useful. It's always on, so it's really great for effects loops or at the end of your board. There are bass EQs, so you saw me use the GE7. There's also a GE7B for bass. And it just has slightly different frequency ranges because a bass guitar has heavier strings and it's on the bass end of frequency. Uh, can you use a bass EQ for guitar? Absolutely. Can you use a guitar EQ for bass? Absolutely. So yeah, just know that.
you might still be confused, but I really can't help you pass that. They're all usable. There are some budget-friendly EQs like the Moore 6 band. I think it's 28 cents on Amazon, so it's a real steal. The Fish and Chips, it's a seven band EQ. This is really affordable, really nice. Uh, Behringer EQ 700. Yeah, we got weird Polish stuff by XR. We have Yamaha graphic EQ. The 10 series by Abinez has a graphic EQ. Basically, there are tons of EQ pedals. Here's an Arion, and they're all doing this. An EQ is an EQ to some extent, but there are some feature heavy EQs that are really cool. One of those is the EQ20. Now this is serious. This is for the person, and you're out there, you're watching. It's not me, I'm not this player, but I know who you are. You're saying, I need presets on my EQs, and I need a big EQ, I need a digital screen, I need to know that I can tweak these EQ parameters to a place that is almost impossible. This is the one for you. Um, this has some features and I really like it. It has four presets. It's the Free the Tone PA 10G Guitar EQ. Um, I've actually had this on a board and might put it back on my new board that I'm gonna build because it's really cool to put this in front of a drive and have different presets to hit it in different ways. And then there's a lot of vintage stuff. Uh, some of my favorite are the old Gaia Tone. This, um, these are from the same line. So this is always on because why would you ever turn it off? And then this is like the jumbo version. Um, so maybe this was like standard and deluxe, but I don't really know. It was the seventies, it was in Japan. It's a big world out there and there's just stuff I don't understand. And then you have parametric EQ. So what is parametric EQ? It is usually just knobs. So sometimes the knob will have its slider. Parametric focuses in on one of the bands, like from the GE7, like let's pick a band. It focuses in, but it lets you slide it left and right a little bit. So it kind of gives you this ability to hone in on one of these, slide it exactly where you want it and boost it. So it's not as powerful in the sense that you don't have all the bands, but it is a little more powerful because you get to focus in on one thing and really adjust the one frequency. So they're pretty much both extremely useful. I've just always been a bigger fan of this. And then, you know, if you're in Russia, in a pawn shop, in a forest somewhere, there's this kind of EQ. I can't actually read it. I think it's an EQ because it has sliders. I think it's a parametric. I don't know, I don't know, but I love Russian pedals. And I can't read this one. That makes me sad. So the point is, all EQs are good. I'm gonna say that. Some of you guys are gonna argue with me, but I believe it. Also, you can just use preamps like the Clover of mine, and there's all kinds of other preamps out there. They're just not as powerful in the EQ department. Today's record time is brought to you by Mandolin Orange Such Jubilee. I first heard this band three or four years ago. I bought up several of the albums and absolutely love all of them. So it has some pretty serious bluegrass roots and I really like that about it. I'm a big fan of mandolins. I'm a big fan of the harmonies that kind of go back with original bluegrass music. And I love how they record the guitars on this. His acoustics sound massive. The songs are just really great as well. So I want you to listen to this and I also want in the comments to tell me about some music that you like that goes back to these same kind of roots. True Americana, real bluegrass, acoustic instruments, good songs. I wanna hear about it and this is a must. So listen to this and let me know what you think. That's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. There are a ton of uses for EQ and there's so many things that I didn't get to cover and one day I will. Things like putting it before and after your fuzz pedal to transform it, putting it in the loops of reverbs and delay pedals that allow and on and on. There's so many great uses. You need to get out there and explore EQ in your own way. And it's really important to get a grasp on EQ and the format of it in a pedal because as you're moving the sliders up, you're teaching yourself what you're wanting to hear in your guitar rig and what you don't wanna hear. So many times we have a hard time getting the language out, trying to explain what we wanna buy or what we need help with. And an EQ pedal is the easiest way to find exactly what you do and do not like. If you like this episode on the other hand, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and there's a bell icon, click that and you'll get notifications of every episode we ever air 
until the end of the world. It's awesome, and you need to do that. Have a wonderful day.